Welcome everyone, this is uh, Shadow Drake, and we are going to try to do face change device on Vulcan. Now, one of the things I will go on ahead and say is that while I did my Europa T1, I will probably also attempt to do this also T1. I still feel like T2 can massively, can be of massive benefit, but an interesting thought occurred to me. <clears throat> Normally we want to take the cool Vulcan air, which unfortunately it's already turning daytime, so I missed that shot. Normally I would take the cool air, store it, any pollutant condensation will be used to cool my main thermal storage. Now that's not really a very early game thing to do, but then something... When I did the Europa heating, I was surprised at how well the oxygen condenser went along. So now I'm wondering if there is something that I'm missing here in Vulcan that can be easily done at tier 1 and have effective cooling. And still also, the biggest benefit is also have a supply of pollutants ready to be used as a coolant. So, with that... Let's get started. I have my usual stuff. And I have this room inside that's gonna get pressurized and warmed. So we're gonna actually start in the opposite end. Usually I filled my face change device loop last. But I think this time I need to build it first. So evaporation chamber because cooling. Condensation chamber. Three, four, five. Let's give it five space. Next. And as you can see, it's starting to turn daytime. So I missed... <clears throat> I missed my window of opportunity for this run. At least. To get everything well set up. So we got our... Chamber. And I will be... Hopping back and forth for any builds or replacing of air tanks. So let's get our basics covered. This will actually give me a chance to... Let's put that away. This will give me a chance to actually rebuild everything. So in this room is going to be our hypothetical living space, greenhouse, whatever. And so what I intend to do is to have this little pipe segment be our coolant pipe. And like I said, because Vulcan, I am on day... Ah, oh, the day counter is gone. I'm on roughly day 140 here, so I should be approaching my Vulcan winter. So hopefully it won't be day for too long. But let's do the typical things. Wear up my face change device. Sis. I didn't need this to be as long. And then here we go. Now... I'm going to go on ahead and set these up because I think I need to have this up and running for what I intend to do next. So, pollutants. Since they are in the atmosphere. We're going to go back to our phase change diagram. Uh, latent heat divided by specific heat means 80 Celsius. Which is kind of problematic because cold nighttime air in Vulcan is 126. Take away 80 from that, I'm limited to 46 celsius to make matters worse condensing nighttime air will keep will condense the pollutants until it hits 152 celsius so this leaves me with two problems um while i could make a storage to store night air this upper limit i cannot hit that for the condensation chamber to effectively dump off heat inside my living space i have got 
to keep it lower than that. So while nighttime air could work, the other problem is I would need to cool that tank or figure out something somehow to keep that tank below that limit. This reaches into another problem because I'm limiting myself to tier one. I have, so in this case, I have no IC chips to use and I'll be relying on just the pure circuit what are they called? Logic chips. Which is doable. I try to stay away from using them, but as I have found out, I cannot. For slightly best performance, I actually printed some off and I intend to use them. So with that, that's half the issue. I can't store a lot of gases. I have to cool them. And I cannot let it get above 152 Celsius. Now, with the heat difference for pollutants, I'm at 80 Celsius. So even if I got to the upper end, if I'm attempting to cool my room to 20 Celsius, the max I can deal with is 100 Celsius. Well, cold as Vulcan, nighttime air is 127. I'm way out of range. So that leaves me with two options. Either one use two phase change device loops to be a stepping stone or two figure out a way to use the nighttime pollutant condensation as a somewhat stable temperature source and so i'm going to choose to go with option two so it's daytime i won't be able to do anything with that so we're going to attempt to get nighttime pollutants and figure out a way to do this. So let's go on ahead and set my evaporation chamber. For the sake of argument, we'll just set it to 20 Celsius. So 3560. Let's go with that. 3560. Turn it on. Condensation chamber. I would set it to max but let's see, 20 plus 80 is 100, so let me just put the system in such a way that it'll throttle at 100. 4.9 megs. Okay. So that is set up. Uh, pipe radiators can just go in there. So. I do have that little atmospherics. That's just to fill up that inside. So let's actually... <laughs> I'm surprised we can build right through that. Let's actually make it so that that can be used to pressurize my pipe metal. I'm going to be throwing pollutants in there they're going to condense so looks like I will need a condensation valve here I need to get my wrench which means liquid pipes I haven't quite decided if I'm going to use this yet One, one good tip for Vulcan, lower your internal pressure so that you can survive outside longer. So now here comes the, the trickiest part of the build. This active end is where I'm going to begin. I think if I use some um, the same principle I did in Europa, some hot Vulcan air. I think I'll be able to... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Where's my valves? Condensation valves, condensation valves. So let's see here. Yeah. 
this is gonna look really jank. And the interesting thing that I think is gonna work out here is if I actually use the condensation to fill up my chamber. Like I said, nothing is pre-made. I have no, no other gases. This is kind of going for a pseudo just started Vulcan. All we have is tier 1 printers. We're desperately trying to make some kind of something work before we fry. So let's see. To simplify the construction, I'm going to use my inline tanks to give me some space. As you may notice, I'm using normal pipes, except for the liquid pipes. I goofed and built quite a lot of insulated liquid pipes, but... Let's see how well this works. And... Connected. So. This is what we got so far. This should... Draw air. Grab my tablet. This amount of pollutants should come in here, condense. I can then pass that condensation in here, which I can ingeniously use to fill up both my chambers. Now, what this is for is going to look like the dumbest thing idea ever. I've already said how expansion valves are going to be dangerous to use on gas pipes. But recall that I said that pollutants will condense at negative, at less than 150 Celsius. That evaporation is going to chill it down ideally 80 degrees. So, cold air, 120, minus 80. I should expect to have pollutants below 75 Celsius in here. Now, since the sun is still high overhead, let's see. Did I forget a sensor kit? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Well, let's let's get some chips. Okay. This is gonna look really stupid because I rarely use chips. But since I need a sensor, uh, let's be right back. And then back. All right, I got my gas sensor. This is going to be tight, so we'll put you right here. Let's wire you up. Let's go on ahead and label you outside. Outside gas sensor. Okay. It's turning nighttime. So let's see. We are going to need a reader, a writer, a memory. And, uh, compare? Compare. Holy moly, this is gonna look absolutely bad. I work with these not by, not much. So, let's just wire things cringing internally. It's been Okay. And now I don't have. Label won't be of much use. Okay, so. What do I want to do? Uh, let's see. I'm thinking I might need this digital valve. And that digital valve will go to a passive vent. Okay, 
So let's see. For this reader, we want to get the outside sensor. And we want the temperature. Okay. Darn it. I knew I would forget to wire something. Let's see, 150 plus 273, actually. Oh, I'm just cheating. Uh, 425 Kelvin. Four twenty-five. Did I rename? Yeah, I renamed that. Whatever. 425. Okay, so. My compare is going to look at my reader. And it's going to look at 425. And I want less. I forgot to wire your power. Is it obvious how little I've used chips? There we go. Should give me a one. Yes. And it is nighttime. Temperature is low. So, let's start this off. This is going to condense. Please condense. There we go, condensing. Alright, I'm just going to put liquids in here. That's going to fill that up. Also, sucking all of that up. Okay, let me just move you, get a little bit here. Ah, this is what I'm hoping for. This will drop below. That's great, that's great, that's what we want. Okay. Okay. Alright, so... Let's let this evaporator chamber fill. I need to go in and fill that a little bit. Let's fill this to... I don't know. 10 megs, give it a buffer. Oh, forgot to turn that on. Okay. Okay. Now, need to get you to five. Come on. So this is this is just filling up my stuff in here. I'm trying to get liquids in here to fill up my chambers, because once this is all set up, it's done. No more. No more messing with that. what I actually will need is for this to fill up properly. Alright, five liters. No more of that. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay, this is going to get stupidly hot very fast. This is where I'm going to be wondering how well this is going to work. Because this is generating liquids... So this should, oh, I hope it cools down. I don't think I'll need this anymore. Oh, wait, that is, I forgot to do that. Uh. Okay. This is full. Okay, 
that full is going to be a problem, so let's add more volume. Okay. Let's cool that down. That is cooling down nicely. And let's attach those radiators. I will try to summarize this because this is going all really fast and it's not very helpful. Okay. Did I make any pipe cows? I did not. Alright. Well, I know what to do. So, this is kind of my rough system for what I think could work. Regulator. Hmm. May have position myself in the pickle here. Back pressure regulator right here. Another passive vent right here. That should hopefully reduce how much is in there. There we go, yeah. And keep it from condensing. There we go. Cooling down. The pipe network is at 10. And it's starting to warm. Oh, no, it's not it's starting to warm up. So let's see what's happening. Uh. holding steady, it's warming up, some evaporation is still happening. But it's actually cooling down in there. That that's 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 kind of what I'm hoping for. I wonder if this will take multiple nights and it's almost been daytime. Let's see. So what do I want to do? I want to look at my compare. It's going to my test. What did I call you again? Test compressor? Test compressor. And I want to for on. I think that'll control it now. kilojoules of thermal energy. The inside is also moving some. Uh, these two consoles are attached to the gas sensor in there. And as you can see, it's actually cooling down. This... That is off. So now, the problems I think I'm going to have to figure out how to solve. This is going to heat up. It 
is definitely going to heat up due to this. And as you can see, it's already losing the ability to push heat because this is warming up. This is going to eventually stop working because this is going to get throttled. How do I come up with a bunch of little chips to make this work? Oh boy! That happened. Alright, well that was a very eventful evening. Uh, okay. So let's see if I can sum this up. This kind of works. But at the same point, it kind of doesn't. If I were to put this one-way liquid valve here, have you here, and connect like so, it's gonna do some whooshing. Waste tank caution. Ooh, waste tank caution. So that gets rid of the pressure here. That can control it. But now I need to wait for another night cycle to see if that harms the system. So let's. <sighs> Let me go vent out that waste tank. Alright, welcome back. I have vented my tank. And so I think I'm going to take the time to kind of explain what happened while we wait for this uh, sun to set. So I am seeing here liquids are happening because my condensation chamber is capped out. It won't absorb anymore. This pipe network is also capped out. And I think I might need to adjust that. Uh, let's see. If I don't want it to go... I think 3 megs is ooh, pretty low. Uh, let's do 4 megs. Because one of the things with this is I need to make sure that there is enough inside this pipe system. That's a big number of convective power coming, uh, coming in. So now, let's see. You know what? I can actually go in there, talk, save some of my waste tank since it's actually cool inside. Admittedly, cool. Cooler than out there. Purely CO2. Oh, so, that night there was a lot of crazy stuff going on. Uh, as, you can, as you saw, I basically had to rush to absolutely pressurize my phase change devices. Pressurize this coolant pipe. Uh, pressurize my gas tanks, my liquid tanks, and my other gas tank. And so now I'm kind of in a stalling phase because I do need I do want to pressurize this living space to about a hundred kPa. Because that's what we would be pressurizing our base to, roughly. Or I always like to pressurize to a hundred kPa because that's Earth atmosphere. So for a greenhouse I would prefer pressurize this to a hundred. If I had sources of oxygen, I would probably have done that as well. So, uh, actually thinking about it, I do need to reattach this here. Uh, that there. And when I'm outside, I guess I'll just attach the passive vent. Oh! Where was I? Oh, oh right, talking about it. Let's go back out there. I can talk about things easier that way. It's starting to cool a little bit. So, this is my main condenser. Condenses everything. I could still let a little bit more out. Might as well do that. So this vent is what actually condenses this whole pollutant chamber. 
these condensation valves, push it into a storage here. What I don't know is if I need this. If I push liquids in here, will they get pushed into this pipe network to evaporate? Or will I lose most of them in here? Because this is only for preventing dangerous overpressurization. Because I really don't want that. That would be bad. This is to make sure that this doesn't get overpressurized with liquids to the point that they stop evaporating. Because if they stop evaporating, no more cooling. And then as you know from my closed loop phase change devices, this this just to try to cool down the condensation chamber. Problem with this though is daytime it's hot. So it does it doesn't look like this will work during daytime very much, but even so, that still did quite a bit of cooling. As you can see, I have quite a bit of condensation occurring here. Six kilojoules worth. That's because I still have quite a bit of liquids evaporating here. And now I know I pressurized this to five liters, but I had a lot more that I must have accidentally let in. And that that's fine. This is still kind of cooling but it's slowing down because it's not no longer being fed anymore. So it seems that I am hitting a steady state. This is another big reason why I don't fill this to 20 liters because imagine if I had the full 20 liters evaporating and can't be sucked into my condensation chamber. That will all be right here. That stress will be much higher and this will break. So right now condensation is happening, and so I will watch this to see how much higher it goes. I can only allow 5 liters of liquid, so I would presume that this should not get that far. I hope. I hope it doesn't. If not, I have to drain this up. But while I'm at it, a thought occurred to me. I chose this logic reader, logic compare, and this to write out the on state. What if instead I write the mode? So if the mode is zero, it should be pressurizing. And I can just leave this on. So when the sun sets and the, the mode should be one, this should ideally be repressurizing. Yeah, that would mean that I do not need this digital valve here. So, now we wait. Come on, set. Oh, let's get this back in here. So, so far this seems so good. Right now, really, the only things that I've used is the basic, the basic uh, metals the addition of some steel for the phase change devices, steel sheets, and the insulated piping. But uh, if it weren't for the fact that I built so many insulated liquid pipes, this probably would just be normal liquid pipes. So it looks like this is doable early on. Just smelt a bunch of iron, copper, gold, some silicon. Oh, 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 come on. Yes, yes, that works, okay. Smell a bunch of iron, copper, gold, silicon, and you should be able to make all of this fairly quick. Let's pressurize that a little bit. So what happens once condensation occurs? Will I get some cooling in here? Or will it all fall out this passive? All right. This might work. This might work. So that's going to cool this down. Ooh, looks like some condensation's happening. This is going to warm up really fast, but let's, let's see. So some liquids are coming out, and I think because I have just a single pipe network of 40 liters, only a small amount is being pushed out, and the rest should be coming in here. 
And I think that applies the same over here. Only a small amount of liquid should be leaving. Come on, get below 70. So this might be the next biggest test. Can I recover? So let's get you back. I'll stop you for now. Oh. It's quite a lot of. down to two megs. Will you cool down faster? Because this might be the next interesting thing. So seeing that, I think probably the only real solution will be to just enclose this whole thing and vacuum out the room. Because if that happens, then I won't get extra temperature increases. I am getting to the point here where this is condensing some 145C liquid, so I'm having a pretty warm liquid already coming in here. And this is just not keeping up. I mean, sure, this is cooling down, but the whole system is going to be stressed to heck. If I were to lower the pressure even more, this should faster I would think no it's picking up hmm that's right so probably the thing that this is an interesting predicament here. It's almost like I need to ex completely expel this in order to make this recover. Because right now, we're starting to push heat back into this pipe network. And so this is slowly getting drained, which means more of it is going to get pushed over here. I think I know what needs to happen. I think I need to redesign this so that I can enclose this pipe network. Because part of the things that's happening that I know that is fighting is the 122 Celsius Vulcan air. When it gets up to really hot in the daytime, this climbs up really high. And that's not good. thing that's happening is this doesn't have enough so while I did make tanks I've been trying purposely avoiding using them so I guess for improvement I will need to enclose this area. Okay. So that will be the next test. Uh, it's already turning daytime. 
I will need to enclose and vacuum out that area. I don't know that I necessarily need to keep pressurizing that inside much. It's 57 kilopascals. This is still doing pretty good. There's still quite a lot. Maybe for a starter base, this might be something to think about. This might be something to work on. Like, obviously, if this was very properly automated, better tanking system, or probably even a second phase change loop, this is probably not a big consideration. So, for making option two work, I think it's somewhat viable. It just needs a lot more considerations to make it truly viable. Like, the fact that I have to enclose this area is probably the big the biggest thing about it so if I enclose this I would I will shield it from the Vulcan weather so this might be something that you would want to build near or inside your base so that you can properly take advantage of it. Let's see, we're already at 90. That's pretty good. May not be the best. And pretty soon this is, yep, this is draining it out. That's what will allow this to keep working for a little bit. So let's just go ahead and enclose. Well, I can't really fully enclose it yet. I need to come up with a better way. So if it's a back pressure regulator right there. as I thought. I, I just couldn't see it. Let's get you back to four. Alright, so if we close you off. Hydration critical. Oh, hydration is critical. Well, it seems like I need to get some more plastic sheets and go hy hydrate, so... That could be bad, but I think I can work with it. Be right back. Alright, hydrated. Okay, so... Figured out some things. Gotta rework this system, so let's remove the vent. Let's remove... need it anymore. Okay, so if I put the vent here. Test compressor vent. It's got a nice ring to it. Alright, you are upset because we lost you. 
test compressor vent. There we go, test compressor vent. And we want mode. Yeah, there we go. Okay. See, we've already warmed up. That's too much heat that's being pushed in here. So I think this would help out, that if we enclose this and vacuum it out or make this a part of our space, just this little ensemble here, that probably will help out with helping keep this system working more properly. But since it's already too hot, I think let's just vent the whole thing out. No reason to keep it. This whole thing's hot. I guess might as well start new. This might be probably the small issue with this. Having to babysit this. So let's go ahead and come out. How warm is it in there? It's back to 44. That's pretty good. Stress is about the same. This is trying desperately to keep this whole inside cool. That's good. This uh, level one automation is working. So let's see where we're at. Uh, power usage. chip just in case so power usage let's see let's see logic uh, yo. oh my gosh okay read logic reader finally so logic reader uses 10 watts it's everything the same batch reader 10 watts logic compare 10 watts, so that's 30. Memory. Nothing. Okay, so we got 30 watts in logic chips. The active vent is another 100. Finally, we got another... So, 100. The phase change device system is another 100 as a pair, so that's 200, 230, and... Back pressure regulator is 230 and other. So 330 watts. So basically a little under the power of a simple filtration system. And we got something that is currently attempting to keep this whole area cool. We've hit a stable point. Now we're just trying to improve that system a little bit. So with that, uh I think really the only thing I can do is vacuum out that inside. And that'll be probably the only biggest improvement because if it's a vacuum in there or keep cold night air, it will eventually just not be as hot in there. And I, I hope that the system will work better in that case. This has been an interesting experiment for me so far because like I mentioned at the beginning, Europa just has cold oxygen. You have to collect your own pollutants or volatiles or nitrous or anything else to get that set up. Now Mars, because it's so temperate, it's probably not where you want to absolutely make a system like this right off the bat. You can probably make something to work with it, but because Mars is a pretty stable temperature around living temp, you're not really hurting for a source for doing any phase change loop devices. You really won't be. The only hindrance to Mars is it's got a relatively low atmosphere, so it might be harder to 
dump off excess heat. Vulcan, as we have seen, it seems possible to have a phase change cooling device set up probably by day two or day three, depending on how fast you rush to get a furnace and smelt quite a bit of materials. So it looks like it's possible to set something up and have something cooling your base down. Uh, this is a very rough in progress thing and I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's more possible. I'm thinking it's quite possible now. The only drawbacks I can think of is while you're doing this, this is stationary's difficulty. You basically, in stationary's difficulty, you basically drink a glass of water per day or you down an entire water bottle a day. I think you start out with three water bottles, which already puts you at a very tight limit that you, if you set the system up, you gotta get really lucky with the trader system to have something to keep you going by. But I think one of the benefits, though, is that because you don't need to store gases, you don't have to spend money to buy nitrous oxide or buy something else. Or, or commit to a bunch of filtration systems to get pollutants out. You can just get volatile. Uh, you can just get pollutants from the volatile Vulcan air. This is empty, that's hot. Let's go ahead and set you back to four megapascals is what I had you at. And as you saw with the chips, while I would totally use an IC10 and automate a whole slew of systems for dumping off excess, uh, keeping an eye on what my temperatures are to dump them off if they get too high or even keep an eye on the stress levels or something like that. Oh, there we go. Here we go again. Because one of the biggest things I'm seeing is that there is not enough storage here. Maybe when you get to the point to actually add a tank. Tanks so quirky to place. Can I even place you? Whatever, placing you right there. If you add a tank to this, the biggest problem I see is that will absolutely add such a huge volume that you have much you have a much lower capability to condense pollutants on an active end. And that's, that's pretty big. See how much this is struggling to even bring it up there. So let's remove you for now. leads me to believe that inline tanks are probably the better solution for this. Not only do they increase the size network of the pipe, but they don't add as much capacity and they cost just iron. Alright, so we're getting condensation again. Should be able to... Means this should start working again. Yep, dumping off heat. This 
So yeah, as you can see, this is kind of kind of a working doable system. I think enclosing this is the right idea, or making this whole segment a part of your base. Because even if this is warm and it releases some heat into your base, this whole phase change loop system is going to capture that and redump it back in here. So it's going to be kind of working against itself, but it should it should contain it. It's not going to be the best way to do this. Probably this being a vacuum is going to work even better. So what if I were to... Still 126 outside. And this is at 89. I think this is not bad, so what I will do is I will enclose it before it gets too hot. I just kind of see what happens. Is there liquids in here? Oh. See, that's good. 90. That means I'm getting quite a lot of thermal energy in there. 36. Oh, yeah, that pipe network completely cleansed out. Now all of the work is being done here. This is working much better now. It's definitely cooling down. Yeah. I think unfortunately this is kind of like a waiting game just to see how well it works. Oh, it's 158 because I guess I'm pumping off stuff. Why is it so hot over here? I just noticed that. Oh, that's the exhaust from the uh, GFG that's down there. <laughs> Mystery solved. Let's see where you're at. 84? 84 Celsius, that's not bad. That might actually be the good solution. If this is a vacuum, that should cool this area off. Yeah, because moving three kilojoules of heat is pretty good. Celsius in there. That's actually becoming some pretty good cooling. How capped out is this? Almost capped out. Let's see, what's the magic number? One, two, three, four, probably five inline tanks. Looks like five inline tanks might be the magic number. The fact that the inside there is kind of fairly all right pressurized. This is a uh, 
an interesting solution. Attempted solution. Oh, sun's rising. Let's close it off. And I think I'm just gonna do wait one more day to see how it behaves. Because I'm curious to see if the condensation chamber will keep work functioning. Look, I'm at, ooh, that's nice. If that pipe network 77, that's that'll be a good sign. I want to check to see how well this will keep working when that vulnerable pipe network is enclosed. Ooh, this is getting close to 27. This is going to empty it out, so therefore this is not going to be a factor for getting extra energy in there. Hydration critical. Ah, yeah, I know. Hydration critical. Nope, I got tomatoes in here. Hmm. Let's see here. 188 joules. Jewels, 186 jewels. 35 Celsius. I think I'm somewhat pleased with this. I think this is doable. All right. Gonna take a quick break, eating and drinking break, and I'm just gonna watch this and then uh, share the results uh, towards the end of the day just to see how well it does. Alright, and we're back. So took a meal and a drinking break. I sat in here waiting on the sun to get about that mountain. And it's been a lovely, patient view. Now, one thing that I noticed is the temperature was still dropping. So that means that I was still pushing heat out. I believe this stayed about the same. So this room still cooled, despite the fact that we had heat radiating from the sun. So let's go and check and see how the rest of the system was looking like. Alright. 10.7 liquids. Still not many pollutants, but slowly increasing. That's a sign that this is getting stressed. 95 Celsius. Oh yeah, there's still some stress. We're getting less and less condensation. So I'm still moving a lot of thermal energy, but not as much anymore. This pipe network is at 95 Celsius. So it looks like enclosing it was probably the right idea. Let's see. This pipe. I can't see pipes in there, can I? Huh. Alright, so I managed to clip. So yeah, 95.4. But I can't. I won't be able to tell what the room is, will I? Because I think it'll tell me. Yep, it'll tell me what's out here. Alright, so. Won't be able to check the room. That's fine. That's fine. That's all good. sun is setting it should be nighttime soon and so that the last thing to see for this test would be whether that pipe will recover but my temperature has been dropping so that's a good sign this system is working so for day two day three maybe day four system this could be very good cooling won't have to rely on uh, cheesing with the portable air conditioner. Come on, set. I want to see. Yep, there we go. There we go. So, to recap, we're condensing pollutants. We have a funky little liquid pass through 
it was first used to pressurize my two chambers, but then after that is strictly to pass liquids to evaporate in here. There we go. So what's going to happen now? It's warming up. And now cooling. Oh. This is very promising. Because that means now I'll be able to transfer more heat outs. This should work better. stress pipes are coming from. Alright. Well, there you have it. I think this is a good proof of concept test. And I think the temperatures are slow, gradually going into a good temperature range. Really, all that's left is for me to finish pressurizing that. stress my system out some more. 85 Celsius, that's pretty good. I'm actually very well pleased. This is working much, much, much better than I expected it to work. This is all tier 1 early on. Pressurize that room to about 100. Give this thing a reason to work. And actually, thinking about it, I know I am stressing this system a lot because I am pressurizing that with a very hot room. With very hot air. If I were only to be using... You know, it, if I've already pressurized it and I left it alone, stop literally just feeding hot gases in there I could actually let the system settle and I'm confident now that this is going to settle this is eventually going to get it to my set temperature roughly 20 Celsius maybe and still be working from day to day to 105. There we go, 105. Alright. Working early phase change cooling loop in Vulcan. How much was it? 100, 200, 300, plus 30, 330? 330 watts. Continuous cooling fairly doable at the beginning. The only materials you will need is a tiny bit of steel just for the fuel chain, uh, phase change devices. Since you are giving steel, steel sheets to make your landing pad, you should have a little bit of extra to fully build these up. If not, well, you had to make steel anyway, so... for a few insulated pipings. Probably a lot of iron to make a bunch of utility pipes liquid and gas varieties but overall I'm very pleased with this result and what you can actually make a little box or enclose this whole system in your base make a small little offshoot and enclose it. I guess whatever works for you. So, thank you for watching this uh, 
Vulcan phase change loop experiments and uh, I'm hoping this can help uh, get you started or to see something that is possible with this uh, now for the future would I do something on Venus my honest opinion no I don't think that there's anything that I can exploit easily with phase change loop the only thing that I could think of is to make an evaporator system with water but it's gonna be an open loop actually I think you can probably make an open loop system here just do the same thing that I did just the evaporator condensate the pollutant condensing here the liquid just feeding pollutant pipe and just a cowl up here I think that'll work probably just as well but I do have a preference for a system that is self-contained that all that so long as you control this temperature where you're dumping all of this to I feel that if you can control this temperature then the system is gonna stay stable set it once and forget it and I think the biggest upgrade once you hit tier 2 is to add a counter flow heat exchanger right here and set the condensation chamber to max out because then you'll no longer have to worry about am I within 80 celsius of my target temperature and if you recall I set this to 20 celsius which means this can only go up to 100 celsius so if this ever peaks above 100 you saw that it really crashed and burned did not really do much cooling I could have had busted pipes and the only reason I was saved is because I never filled this evaporation chamber to full even now it's still at 11 liters I only intended to put 5 but even 5 liters would have kept you from having problems here Vulcan Sun is coming right back up and the inside is cooling down nicely I'm confident it'll get down to 20 Celsius but this has been a very cool experiment uh, and again probably won't do anything for Venus I can't honestly think of a way to deal with the 460 Celsius atmosphere atmosphere in Venus no phase change can occur but water at 370 Celsius so unless the developers release a new gas or something that can condense at a higher temperature in Venus you have to use two atmospheric AC units to come down to that temp before you can begin doing this and and really there's if you're comfortable with the cooling loop in Vulcan making something work or have made different heating or cooling devices in different planets and can get that to work you probably really won't need to see something for Venus like that. Way staying caution. Way staying caution, I understand. Alright. This is this has been a very nice video. This is Shadow Drake. I hope you've picked up some new tricks, something to help you out. And uh have fun engineering and best of luck.